How's it going everyone? Ben here, your friendly neighborhood transgender medical student, and today we're going to be talking about nasal testosterone, which I've never heard of until recently because the last couple of weeks I spent um, working at a primary care center which had a um, <laughs> pharmaceutical rep come in and give us some samples of it. So I made a video a couple of months, maybe even a year ago, about the different formulations of testosterone that are most popular among transgender men and those who suffer from uh, low T, low testosterone, cisgender men who suffer from it. And uh, the most common ones, of course, is the intramuscular injection or the subcutaneous injection formulations. And then there is the patch and the gel, most common. Oh, and of course, there's the pellets for people who need long-term sustained testosterone and who don't want to keep having to be prescribed medications the pellets go under your skin but nasal testosterone is something that i've never heard of before and apparently it's been around for a while in 2016 it was fda approved for the treatment of uh, hypogonadism or low t in cisgender men it's not fda approved for hormone replacement therapy for transmasculine individuals. However, I will say most drugs uh, are often used off-label uh, to treat multiple other conditions. So being the person that I am, I got incredibly curious when the uh, pharmaceutical representative gave us brochures for this nasal testosterone, the brand name of this drug, which only exists in the US, the brand name, there's no generic form as of yet, is called Natesto, which is a crime in itself. That's the first big red flag. I get this from the drug, I'm just kidding. But the fact that they just turned the words nasal testosterone and shortened it into Natesto, y'all need a better marketing campaign to make a better name for this drug. It's just so corny. But um, I got super curious because I am of the belief that the more methods we have to give a certain drug to a patient, the better it is because not all patients can tolerate different forms of testosterone. So I went through a deep dive and looked at the pros and cons. And this is essentially, this video is going to be talking about the 101, the pros and cons and indications for using nasal testosterone if you are interested in it. I want to start off with the big elephant in the room and that is the cost of Natesto. Because it is a brand name drug, it is very, 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 very expensive without insurance. And even if you have insurance, it's incredibly hard to get prior authorization to get this drug covered because insurance is going to be like well there's cheaper forms of testosterone available that you can use as a patient why not try those instead so you will really really have to fight with your insurance company to get approval to have this drug covered even if your insurance covers it because not all insurance companies will cover it there is a um a, a little um what's it called what's the word what's the word there is a um, financial assistance program uh, that's the word I was looking for, for Natesto through the website. But, uh, but, but with all drugs, with financial assistance programs, it's not always guaranteed you're going to get the amount that you need to be able to afford it year after year. So I actually looked up the GoodRx coupon for Natesto if you are planning on paying it out of pocket. And it is $200, so on the cheaper end. <laughs> so it's it's ridiculous to be able to pay it out of pocket unless you are filthy rich, which I am not, and the majority of trans patients aren't because we are systematically disadvantaged because of discrimination and stigma in the society. And I guess if you're a cisgender person who also is suffering from low T or hypogonadism, it, you will also have to be rich. But aside from that, what are some good things about Natesto and how do we how do we even use it? Well, Natesto kind of works very similarly to, I have, I don't really have Natesto on me because it's so expensive, but I have this uh, Pluticasone nasal spray for my allergies <laughs> spray, but it's very similar to this. It looks like this. And you spray one nostril and the other nostril three times a day. So you have to use this nasal spray quite often to get the desired effects and to get the level of testosterone you need to be in the therapeutic range um, to see noticeable results. And that is where this can be a pro or cons for people who like to take daily medications. It, this might be an advantage, but you do have to apply it three times a day, once in the morning, once in the afternoon, and once in the evening. And for people who are always on the go like me, and I tend to forget things when I am on the go and I leave things here and there, 
it's very difficult to be able to carry this around and to spray it three times a day. I would much rather choose something where I can just inject myself once a week. But for people who really, really prefer not being stuck with a needle once a week, or people who have really bad skin allergies, who have skin reactions to the patch and the gel, Natesto is a great, great option for you. As far as its effectiveness in increasing your testosterone levels, it's actually really, really good. Um, especially if you use it like how it's prescribed to you, you're using it three times a day, one on each nostril every time you apply it. And I've looked at both the company-backed research, right, research I've seen on PubMed, and every single research study that I've looked at has shown, and clinical trial, has shown that if you use this as prescribed, this will increase your testosterone levels. There is a small group of people where it didn't really help that much, but Natesto does increase your available testosterone levels in your body. However, something to note is that compared to the injectable forms of testosterone, the other androgen, DHT, which is developed from testosterone, which aids in other masculinizing features such as beard hair, that is lower compared to the intramuscular and subcutaneous injectable forms of testosterone. Another thing to note is that if you have a history of, a medical history of allergic rhinitis, sinusitis, deviated septums, or your nose just doesn't work right compared to other people like me, I have such bad allergic rhinitis. Natesto might not work as efficiently for you because you really need stable mucous membrane mucous membranes in your nose for the drug to be absorbed. You can't have any form of fibrosis or things blocking in the way of absorption because then the drug will not work because it's a gel that gets sprayed into your nostrils and the mucosa within your nostrils absorb the drug. Another thing to note is that there's specific forms of nasal sprays to help people breathe better uh, which cause vasoconstriction. Uh, one specific brand is Sudafed. If you use those vasoconstricting uh, nasal sprays before you use Natesto, it will decrease its absorption because it keeps blood from going to your nose and the, that blood is needed for the drug to be absorbed. So the recommendation is if you need to use those vasoconstricting nasal drugs, and I recommend that you check out if whatever nasal spray that you're currently using causes vasoconstriction in your nose, you'll have to use it around the same time you use the vasoconstricting nasal spray or wait 30 minutes after application to give yourself the Natesto sprays. So yeah, it is not a perfect drug, it's not the best drug in the world, but a lot of people may benefit from Natesto, such as those who can't tolerate the injection forms of testosterone, the patch form of testosterone, or the gel form of testosterone. The nasal spray helps with people who can't tolerate them. And also, some people just would like to prefer something that goes in your nose instead of applying it somewhere or injecting it somewhere. So there's pros and cons to Natesto, and I'm glad that this formulation exists for people who may benefit from it. But me personally, I don't think I could do it. I'm actually very much comfortable with subcutaneous injections. And I've been getting very, very good results over the last four years of being on testosterone with it. So I don't think I'll be changing it anytime soon. But if you are experiencing some forms of distress based on the application method of testosterone you're currently using, maybe consider Natesto as an alternate type to try out. I know I've been showing you all my uh, allergy <laughs> nasal spray, but just pretend it's a Natesto bottle. Um, but I hope this video was informational. I hope you learned something new from this video and I hope that you'll share it with someone that may benefit from this information and please follow me on Instagram and Twitter to keep up with my daily life and activism work if you are interested and follow me on this channel to see newer videos that I'll make in the future. And of course information about Natesto will be in the description below so you can check out the patient information link 
on the drug. And I love you all. Mwah. This is Ben.